All right, so hello and welcome to the beautiful city of Madrid. It's fair to say I've fallen in love with what I've seen so far. But anyway, come along and join me in exploring this wonderful city. But first, here's a little quick teaser. Let's go. Alright, so we've just touched down in Madrid airport, it's time to get the metro, hopefully we don't get lost, fingers crossed. Time to head into the city and let's see what we can find, let's go. So we head down to get the metro into the centre of Madrid. Matt pulls off some questionable moves and then asks a local Spanish man where we can find some authentic cuisine. We just couldn't help ourselves, could we? You thought we were joking. All right, so hello and welcome. It is day one. We are in hopefully the beautiful city of Madrid. So we don't really have a plan today. It's just going to be winging it, explore and see what we find. But anyway, let's go and explore. Let's go. So throughout this video, I'm going to be taking you to pretty much all the main sites in Madrid. And believe me, there are plenty. But like I said, today we're just going to explore and see what we find. So just behind me here, we've got like a fancy shopping center called Galeria Canalejas. So we're going to go and take a look inside there pretend to buy some fancy expensive stuff, why not? So we head inside and it's fair to say that this really sets the tone for the grandeur and beauty that we're about to see throughout Madrid. As a bonus, there's also a beautiful grand piano that you can request to play. Time for the expert, we've got permission. After Matt's beautiful performance, you can also head downstairs to some of the most interestingly well decorated restaurants I've ever seen in my life. But anyway, that's enough pretending that Gucci and Louis Vuitton are within my price range. It's time to carry on exploring. We're greeted by some lovely people playing cellos in the street, and some more beautiful architecture. So we're just wandering again and we do have some really fancy buildings. So we've got the Casino de Madrid, which is like, I'm guessing Madrid's main casino and it looks so fancy inside. I don't think they'd let me anywhere near that front door. And then turning around, we've got Hermes, which I've just found out is like a a really fancy department store, so I think we might go and have a look out of there, just out of interest. And then we have got the Banco Bilbao or something like that, and we've got these really cool chariots up at the top. But uh, you know, instantly I just think it's absolutely stunning. Like, just the buildings, the, the bougie-ness of it all, really is lovely. So yeah, excited to carry on exploring. Anyway, we carry on down the street of Calle de Alcalá, where we find the Ministerio de Igualdad, or Ministry of Equality. We also find another building, Instituto Cervantes, the world's largest organization for promoting the study and teaching of Spanish language. Named after this lovely man here, Miguel Cervantes, considered to be the greatest Spanish writer ever. Although, ironically, the building has beautiful grand Greek pillars. So yeah, we're just wandering around and it just, it's so easy to just get lost in the streets. There's so much going on, so many fancy buildings. But anyway, we spotted something which looks really fancy over there. Plaza de Cibeles, I googled it, looks really nice. So let's head over there. Named after the Roman goddess of fertility, Cybele's Fountain has stood here since 1782, with the goddess sat inside a chariot pulled by two lions. And just behind it stands a really beautiful stone white building. So just behind me here, this beautiful imposing building is Palacio de Cibeles, or Cybele's Palace. Now this was originally began to be built in 1907 as a post office, and now it's kind of like a place where the city council are and a cultural center. And honestly, it's just such a stunning little spot. Uh, so I'm hoping we find more little gems like this dotted around the city of Madrid. But also, just up there, I'm not sure if you can see some heads popping out. There's like a viewpoint up there, so we might go and have a look up there if it's free. See what the views are like down onto Plaza de Cibeles. So we head on in inside Palacio de Cibeles, and it turns out there was a viewpoint, and it's only three euros. And the views definitely did not disappoint. Wasn't sure what to expect, but take a look at all that. Wow. For three euros, I'd definitely say it's worth it. So here you can see you do get some fantastic views down onto Plaza de Cibeles. It is a 360 degree viewpoint, but honestly around the other side, it's cool to see the city, but the views aren't that amazing. And also, don't worry, just a little heads up, we will be seeing all the amazing sights within Madrid very soon. We honestly just found so many beautiful things throughout the city, so I just want to show you as much of it as possible. So picking back up from where we left off, it turns out the inside of Cybele's palace is as beautiful as the outside, 
Actually, it seemed as though all the buildings inside Madrid were just beautifully decorated. Moving on. It's mid-afternoon and we head towards Retiro Park, probably one of my favourite places in the whole of Madrid. But on our way, we stumble across another one of Madrid's beautiful fountains. And this one is made of lovely white marble and depicts the Roman god of the sea, Neptune. But honestly, you can just see these absolute works of art just dotted throughout the city everywhere. Anyway, it's about time I stopped getting distracted. Let's finally head to see Madrid's most popular park. And here we are at last, Retiro Park, covering an impressive 350 acres and located pretty much right in the centre of the city. Containing over 15,000 trees, this luscious green oasis was created all the way back in the 17th century as part of a royal palace's grounds. But in 1868 it switched over from royal hands to the councils and became a public park. And more recently, just in 2021, the park was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So enough of me rambling, let's go and find out why. So here we are, this is the spot I was looking for. You see we've got this lovely little lake and the monument of King Alfonso, which means nothing to me, but it looks absolutely beautiful. So we'll probably go around there and get a closer look. But this is definitely one of the popular spots. You've got all these people lined up getting their photos, their selfies. But a uh, lovely spot. Oh, and also if you're interested, you can actually hire a little boat, which you can see on the lake there. So it's probably really nice if it's a bit sunnier and a bit warmer perhaps. But yeah, I think it's around six euros to do that. And here we are. Honestly, this place is like something you'd expect to see in Rome. It is absolutely stunning. So this is the monument of Alfonso XII. And just here you can see the statue of the king in bronze atop of the marble tower. And honestly, I've got to say, I think this could be my favourite spot in the whole of Madrid. The detail and the sculptures and just across the whole monument is just absolutely incredible. So if I were you, I would have this at the top of your to-do list for when you visit Madrid. And it might also be worth visiting nice and early when the park opens, just so you're not there when there's loads of people. Moving on to the next best spot in Retiro Park, we leave King Alfonso's monument behind. And just around a five minute walk away, we have Palacio de Cristal, which is another gem of a spot. So here we go, right behind me, we've got Palacio de Cristal, Crystal Palace. Lovely little building, unfortunately the sun's sort of in the wrong spot, so I can't really show you it from uh, where the body of water is, but I'll show you the rest of it, it really is a perfect little spot. So here we go, we've got this lovely little pond, we've got a fountain, it's even, right, if I can find it. Got a lovely little black swan there, uh, which I've never seen before, red beak. And again, like the autumn colours are just like gorgeous, you've got all the leaves falling off, and um, you know, it's such a lovely spot, so. If you're in Madrid, definitely check out uh, Retiro Park here. I butchered that, but you know what I mean. And after a long and tiring first day exploring in Madrid, it was time to put the camera away. But there's still plenty of great things which I've got to show you over the next few days. All right, so it is now day two in the beautiful city of Madrid. The plan today, Matt, is Royal we Palace are. of Madrid. Oh, go on. And then we are. Well, and then we are. And then we're off to the Egyptian yeah. uh, monument. With, no, I'm too nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and then two, Matt, is it the Temple of Debod? Temple of Debod. Which is basically like an Egyptian archaeological site which has been moved from Egypt to Madrid. So can't wait to go and see that. But anyway, let's go. And so we set off again through the streets of Madrid, which typically are pretty narrow and engulfed in between colourful tall buildings and often you also find some nice artwork on the sides of buildings. Anyway, we make it to another one of Madrid's hotspots where you can find the cathedral and royal palace right on top of each other. All right, and here we go. We made it to the royal palace of Madrid, an absolutely beautiful building and one of the largest palaces in the world, which is pretty impressive. So this is the official residence of the royal family, but now it's only really used for state ceremonies as they don't really live there anymore. So just to give you a bit of perspective, right by me here we've got the Royal Palace of Madrid and then here we have got the Cathedral, which also looks beautiful. So we'll see what we can check out, we'll see if we can get inside the Cathedral and the Palace. And just before we head inside the Cathedral you can also see a fantastic view looking out to the west, even with some mountains in the background. It's time to check out the Cathedral. We pay 7 euros to get in, but what we didn't realise is that we were paying to enter the museum and viewpoint from the dome. But anyway, no filming was allowed, but to be honest, if you just pay one euro twenty at the cathedral, you aren't actually missing much. Unless, like Matt, you want some eccentric fashion inspiration from the Pope. Although the museum probably isn't worthwhile, with the seven euro fee you do get these cool views down into the palace, but of course you also get to go up to the dome where there are some great panoramic views. Apologies for the wind. Excuse me, Matty boys. There we go. 
Lovely views again, I just tap on you. There you go, look at that. Absolutely stunning. Muy hermoso. So yeah, you can see all this stone looks really new and actually the, the cathedral was only finished being built in 1993, which is uh, crazy really. I think the first stone was laid in 1883, I believe. Uh, so you've got a period of, you know, 100 and just over 100 years where it was sort of being built on and off really, but only finished uh, 29 years ago, so. After enjoying the panoramic views from the dome, it's time to explore the cathedral. Instantly, we're greeted by some really interesting colours on the inside of the dome. Honestly, I've never seen a church decorated like this before. There really was an incredible contrast between the bold stone pillars and the archways, and the vivid colours and mosaics on the ceiling, and the vibrance of the lively stained glass windows. Again, it's time to move on. Now, we're going to see something you certainly wouldn't expect to find in Madrid. An ancient Egyptian monument, which has been moved over 4,000 kilometres from its home. We leave modern architecture behind us, to go in search of the Temple of Dibod. All right, and here we go, we made it. We are in Park de la Montaña. Right behind me here is a real Egyptian monument, which is really interesting, the Temple of Dibod. But anyway, let me tell you a little bit about it. But yeah, so you're probably thinking, why on earth is there the remains of an Egyptian temple in Madrid? And so this here has actually been here for about 50 years and it had to be sent stone by stone. It was donated from the Egyptian government to Madrid, had to be rebuilt stone by stone. Uh, but the thing itself, uh, it's actually about 2,200 years old, which is uh, pretty cool. Part of the reason why it was sent to Spain is because Spain helped uh, recover and protect some of these archaeological sites in Egypt. And actually, I'm sure the monument in this photo will probably be familiar. Abu Simbel, an ancient Egyptian temple which some Spanish archaeologists helped restore. And some of these incredible monuments in Egypt were threatened because of flooding due to the construction of the Aswan Dam. And so the Egyptian government paid gratitude by sending the US, Italy, the Netherlands, and of course Spain, magnificent temples. Yeah, just a heads up as well, I think you can actually go inside, you can see that queue there. Uh, I believe it's free, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, we don't have time for that, so yeah, if you do come, uh, you might want to have a look inside. Certainly quite a contrast from the Egyptian temple. We returned back to our hostel along Madrid's main street, Gran Via. Honestly, we didn't really stop to explore it. But if you enjoy shopping or not, it's likely worth visiting just to experience the buzz of the Spanish capital. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even meet some Transformers as well. <laughs> All right, good morning. It is day three. I'm on top of the hostel on the rooftop bar and check this out for a view. It's absolutely incredible. You don't get better views in the city than this. From the hostel. It's crazy. Yeah, the sun's rising. Time to get the drone out, I think. Let's go. Right, so the plan this morning is I'm going to go on a little solo adventure. Matt's going for a run. Uh, so what we are going to be doing is I'm going to find some spots for my drone. Hopefully get my drone out again. Then we're going to go to the Santiago Bernabeu, which is Real Madrid's stadium, which should be great. And then I think I might try and go and see the bull ring. And then after that, tonight we're going to go to the Botanical Gardens, which looks lovely. Uh, like gardens with loads of lights and stuff. So yeah, it's a nice description. Should be nice. But anyway, let's go for a little wonder, shall we? Alright, so now it's time for a little solo wonder. We're just in Retiro Park, uh, which is a lovely little spot. I've already shown you a bit of it. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know regarding the... I'll just get this out, just to show you. So, regarding like the metro and stuff. Um, so me and Matt got this ticket, which is about 12 euros, and you get 10 journeys on the metro. And we've literally only used one each from the airport to the city. Um, so regarding getting around the city, you know, everything's within sort of like a mile radius of the city centre, so you know, you definitely don't really need to use the metros that much, so I just thought I'd let you know, regarding that, pretty much everything's within walking distance within 20-25 minutes, so 
yeah, if you don't mind walking, it's definitely better to just wander around the city, really, and then you don't miss stuff as well, so. I was just wandering through Retiro Park again, and went to Alfonso's monument and the Crystal Palace to get my drone shots, since it was a beautiful sunny day. It was way quieter at 10am on Saturday morning, so yeah, definitely visit relatively early to avoid the crowds. But as you can see, I captured some fantastic shots which I was buzzing with, but I've already shown you all this. Now, let's go ahead to our next thing on the list. Alright, it's time to go and check out the Santiago Bernabeu. Time to get on the metro, let's go. Thankfully, the metros are really easy to use. Just buy one of these cards from the ticket machine, and when you scan it, it also tells you how many journeys you have left. Anyway, the metros are really frequent, but can get very busy, despite what it seems here. So just a few stops, and here we arrive at the incredible Santiago Bernabeu, home to the most followed club in world football, Real Madrid. All right, so here we go. Just behind me here, we've got the Santiago Bernabeu, the football stadium of Real Madrid, or Los Blancos if you're Spanish. It's a bit like a construction site at the minute, but hopefully we can get in okay into the stadium too. Let's go. So it costs 15 euros to do the stadium tour without a guide. You can get the tickets at the door by scanning this, but it does get really busy so I'd recommend you book in advance or else you'll have to wait in Burger King like me for two hours. Straight away we get an incredible view of the stadium, but unfortunately there's loads of construction work going on. You can see here one of the stands is basically missing and it did make the experience a little disappointing. However, as a big football fan I'm pleased that I've seen it. However, with an astounding $1 billion in loans proposed, the development should see an incredible stadium for the start of the 2023 season. This will involve renovating the stadium and building a steel wraparound roof, among other technological advances, which will help it become what they're calling a digital arena. And now that we've seen the inside of the ground, it's time to see the club museum. Now, I'm going to be honest, I've always preferred Barcelona, but it's hard not to appreciate the colossal heights of football and success this club has achieved. Especially in Europe, Real Madrid are basically kings of the Champions League, thanks to the insane amount of world-class players they've had over the years. And I'll just apologise for those of you who couldn't care less about football, but for those who do, I'm sure you can appreciate what it means to be in a place like this. And if you're a proper Real Madrid fan, you can even sell all of your organs in the club shop to buy things like an extraordinarily overpriced doormat, scarf, keyboard and even Monopoly board. There we go, that's the stadium tour done, tick. So let's see what's in store for us now. So we're pretty much back in the centre of Madrid. Later on, we're still going to go and see the botanical gardens, which should be really nice. But for now, we're going to go and check out uh, Prado Art Gallery, I think, which is free. So we're going to go and take a look, quick little look in there. So although I was really shocked that we managed to get in for free, normally it's actually 15 euros to enter. But I checked on the website and it does actually say that you can get in for free between the hours of 6 and 8pm Monday to Saturday, which is brilliant really. Anyway, if you are interested in art, Madrid is the place to be. I'm not too fussed myself, but you can't help but be amazed of what some people are capable of making. Although, I do have to say that these ones were a little disturbing, especially this man eating a child half made of bacon. And there we go. Now that wraps up another lovely but tiring day. We walk through a nice little street market and then it's time for bed. Another special adventure awaits for us tomorrow. Alright, so good morning. It is day four. Last day, unfortunately. But uh, last night, the Botanical Gardens were sold out so we couldn't get in. But uh, today, we are doing a day trip to Toledo, uh, which is meant to be a really nice city, quite close to Madrid. So we're going to go on a day trip there. So yeah, look forward to that. The city of Toledo is known as one of the oldest cities in Spain. Its rich cultural history has sought to become a UNESCO World Heritage Site due to the peaceful coexistence of Jewish, Muslim and Christian people at some points in its history. And the most iconic site in Toledo is the Alcazar, which sits atop of the city, where once a Roman barrack stood 2,000 years ago. It makes for the perfect spot for a fortress, as it would have been protected by the natural gorge which you can see here. However, the main attraction wasn't the Alcazar, it was the cathedral. I'm not even over-exaggerating. Honestly, I think it's the best I have ever seen. From the outside, it boasts an extraordinary gothic look, seen by its flying buttresses and pointed arches. Anyway, it was the inside which amazed me. Honestly, the level of detail and intricacy was just outrageous. I really could have spent all day there, taking in all the artwork, the endless amount of sculptures, decoration, gold, stained glass windows, and just insane amounts of detail.
If you'd like to watch my full video at Toledo, it'll be out a week after this video, so you'll either find it linked at the end of this video, or you'll find it on my channel. And finally, after an incredible and action-packed four days, our Madrid trip comes to an end. And here we are, unfortunately, back in Madrid airport, but I've had an absolutely incredible time. I didn't really have many expectations for Madrid, but it's fair to say I absolutely fell in love with it. And if you do want to go and watch out that vlog for Toledo, that'll be coming up very soon. But anyway, travel safe, take care. Hasta luego, mis amigos. Bye-bye.